Happy House. In the next hour and a half, left-footed Howard Cohn learns the dance yoga style from Robin Dean Carnes on Body and Soul. Kathy Christensen takes a beat on your heart, the good and bad of cholesterol, with Dr. Robert DiBianco on In Sickness and in Health. Impresario David Eisner tunes us into the Celtic sounds of Sue Richards and Maggie Sansone on musical traditions. The professor, Lisa Page, is joined by Marita Golden, author of Saving Our Sons and founder of the Zora Neale Hurston Richard Wright Foundation. The dilettante Mark Cohen takes a condor's eye view of the turmoil in the Andes with Georgetown prof Mark Chernick, plus commentaries by Randy Bain, Tony Bruce, Herman Schwartz, and Haynes Fraser, and poetry by Dwayne Redman. But first, the editors of the Tacoma Voice have the news. In late February, Tacoma Park City Administrator Beverly Habita selected a new police chief for the city. Thomas W. Anderson Habita's choice is a 24-year U.S. Army veteran and five-year chief of police in West Columbia, South Carolina, a town slightly smaller than Tacoma Park. Anderson will take charge of Tacoma Park's 52-member force on March 17th. According to Habita's office, Anderson shifted his department from the traditional policing methods to Cops on the Beat, a program similar to community-oriented policing. Anderson, who holds a master's degree in public administration, served as the military equivalent of town manager of Hunter Army Base. He has also commanded a 365 police chief unit at Fort Stewart, Georgia, and ran a multinational police station while serving in Vietnam. In the early 80s, Anderson worked at the Pentagon. City Administrator Habita says that Anderson is a good choice for Tacoma Park because of his background in the military and as a head of a small municipal force. However, there have been concerns raised by some pacifistic community members that, because of his employment history in the military, Anderson will have to conduct his work outside of the Tacoma Park nuclear-free zone. The recent hiring of a new Tacoma Park police chief has a city of buzz about the hiring process and a city council which gives all the power of hiring the police chief to a non-elected official. While the selection committee was comprised of a cross-section of Tacoma Park's wards, the hiring process has come under fire from those who argue that the opportunity for meaningful public input was inadequate. Some of the criticism comes from supporters of acting police chief Dan Wortman who served the city for 26 years and has twice been passed over for the chief's job. Bev Habita alone chose a 12-member volunteer police selection committee and made the final hiring decision. Karen Anderson, member of the Public Safety Advisory Committee and a strong supporter of Captain Wartman, says she was especially aggrieved that, quote, no one from that group was invited to help select the chief. Quote, Bev Habita is not an elected official, so where does she get all the power in selecting our police chief, asked Anderson. The answer is in the municipal charter. The, the city administrator is given the power, quote, to appoint, suspend, or remove all heads of offices, departments, or agencies who shall serve at her sole and absolute pleasure. Fingers are also pointing at the part-time mayor and city council members who focus on policy issues like a ban on Burma and speed humps while leaving the job of everyday affairs to the city administrator, deputy city administrator, and assistant city administrator. The selection process heated up on the Tacoma Voice email list as well as uh, former city attorney Tomas Gallardo, who argued that the criteria for chief should have been announced and some mechanism for public comment should have been allowed. He pointed to the tenure of Tacoma Park icon Mayor Sam Abbott and wrote, quote, That's how it was done when Sam Abbott was mayor and democracy was a thriving reality in Tacoma Park. Fully I fully support the city taking global stands, but how does Burma get more exposure than the selection of a police chief? Janet Pepin, vice chair of Between the Creeks New Neighborhood Association and a member of the Police Selection Committee, said that in the early stages she did poll her neighbors about what they wanted in a police chief, but later on the issue of confidentiality extended even to the questions they would ask in the interview. We couldn't tell anyone, said Pepin. Pepin defended the process and Habita by saying, why blast the city administrator who has the prerogative to hire who she wants? Critics should look to the city charter and do something about it. City Administrator Bev Habita said that she selected members who had not served in other city committees and looked for a wide cross-section of the city and insists that she follow the committee's lead. Quote, the committee came up with the best candidate. Their top candidate was the one I selected, said Habita. This story comes to us from voice reporter Todd Post. Its stores won't open officially until later this spring, but the Tacoma Park Silver Spring Co-op's much-anticipated move to Tacoma Junction is finally about to happen. On March 15th, the co-op will sign a 10-year lease to move into the Turner Electric Building on the corner of Carroll and Ethan Allen Avenues. 
For the co-op, the move to the junction ends an eight-year search for a larger site than its current 1,200-square-foot store on Sligo Avenue. After 16 years on Sligo Avenue, the co-op finds itself in a building with five times more space. With all this extra room, the co-op has some ambitious plans. The new store will offer a larger selection of products as well as services that haven't been possible because of the cramped conditions at the Sligo Avenue store. Some new features include a customer service desk, pay phones, restrooms, and an ATM. There will be a deli to provide sandwiches and other prepared, prepared sh foods. The emphasis on natural foods, exclusively vegetarian, will continue, according to Eric Buck, operations coordinator for the co-op, but now customers will also be able to find more mainstream product, products such as frozen vegetables, aluminum foil, and assorted housewares. It's going to have a major effect on revitalizing this junction, says Jody Dickerson, owner of Glad Rags, a Carroll Avenue neighbor and one of the immediate beneficiaries. Carl Elefante, an architect and president of the Tacoma Community Development Corporation, applauds the move. Quote, no one doubts that the co-op itself will be a success in the junction. While the city council and the co-op argued over parking during January's weekly council meeting, nobody who has been following the issue seriously thought the co-op would reconsider moving. Ultimately, the co-op decided to accept the city's vague but supportive pledge to help the co-op obtain the required number of parking spaces to operate successfully in the junction. Move coordinator Larry Bassett estimates the overall cost of the move will come to around $850,000, of which the co-op will put up $125,000 itself. To help with moving expenses, the city council has peeled off a $125,000 loan of a half a million dollar community development block grant, earmarked for revitalization of the junction. Additional financing will come from various community development organizations, mostly in the form of loans. If all goes according to plan, the co-op should be open for business in the new building by early fall. Will it stay or will it go? That's the question that North Tacoma residents are asking about Montgomery College these days. As the debate, as the debate about the possible expansion or relocation of Montgomery College's Tacoma Park campus intensifies, North Tacoma residents have banded together in opposition to a quick decision by the college. College President Robert Perea has recommended that the College Board of Trustees make a final decision by the end of March. A public meeting held by the college on February 10th prompted anger among members of the, of the North Tacoma Citizens Association. While it has been known the college might move or expand, some citizens said they learned for the first time that relocation of the campus had become a feasible option. Under concept plan number one, the institution would stay at the current location and expand along Fenton Street and Georgia Avenue and would use Jessup Blair Park on the other side of the metro tracks. Under the second option, the college would move from the current site and build a new campus on East-West Highway at the present Canada Dry bottling plant. Moving to Silver Spring would cost about $114 million, while expanding the current site would only cost $72 million, according to figures released by the college. Randy Bain, co-president of the North Tacoma Citizens Association, says that the plan for a possible move worries his neighbors who enjoy the buffer of stability and security provided by the college. Another point of concern to community members is that the college will attempt to close Fenton Street under Concept Plan 1 because it will become the new center of the campus. Although a traffic study has not yet been conducted, it is apparent that Tacoma Park and Silver Spring residents will protest such an action. Quote, the college has come out with radical schemes and is scaring the community, said Bain. We don't want to start a war, but we are prepared to do so if necessary, he added. Nevertheless, Bame said that he and his neighbors are eager to work with the college and believe they can come to a compromise. The North Tacoma Association plans to aggressively lobby county representatives in the next few weeks. Lee Taylor, the college's media relations director, says that it's premature to assume that anything at this point, quote, the president is considering all options and listening to the concerns of the community. Hyattsville beat out Tacoma Park on the environmental and just plain cool front with its free bike program modeled after ones in Portland, Oregon and Madison, Wisconsin. In those cities, bikes are free to anyone who cares to take a spin. In the Hyattsville program, riders get the use of a free bike by signing up with the city's recreation department located near Magruder Park and the Northwest Branch Trail. Ken Carter, a member of Hyattsville Organization for a Positive Environment or HOPE, said that the city's traffic committee, also known as Face to Face Committee, have been thinking about what to do with the city's 60 abandoned or confiscated bikes for some time. Our program will be more a free day rental, 9 a.m. to sundown, rather than take this bike and do what you want, said Carter. Adults will be asked to show a driver's license, and kids will have to bring an adult the first time they sign up for a bike. 
Carters said the city has worked out insurance problems by requiring riders to sign a waiver of liability. Carter and members of HOPE have held two bike tune-up parties with the goal of 10 adults and 10 kids bikes available for the spring. The yellow paint has been, that will cover the bikes has already been donated by David Thomas Construction Company, and now Carter is looking for a bike shop who will power spray all 20 bikes. Area high school students are being asked to give service to the new program, fill their state-required volunteer hours, and learn how to fix bikes at the same time. Carter hopes someday to join jurisdictions between, links between other jurisdictions. And that's it for this edition of the news. Thanks for joining us. Uh, I, I'm Eric Bond. I'm Nancy O'Donnell. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs>
all that good stuff. And then the third element is the this, this sort of self-expressive and fun part of dance. So you have the yoga, the flexibility, the breathing, the self-awareness. It opens you up. Right, it opens you up and kind of centers you. And then the sweating in the aerobics uh, and for the fitness part. And then the dance, which is, you know, most, most right. people think that's really fun, especially right. if they can get over feeling self-conscious, yes. which is a lot of my job is to help people get over that part. Well, the sweating is the part that I, I relate to. The rest of it, you're going to have to teach me. Okay. Uh, <laughs> now I may sort of ill-advisedly so that this suggests that this might be sort of faddish, but um, I mean there are these ideas that come along. We grab at them, uh, we're in love with them for a, for a few weeks, and then they move on. We move on. Uh, but this is something. This is an idea that actually transformed your life in a way, right? Am I right? Oh yeah, definitely. Um, it's well, I've been doing yoga for over 20 years, and I got into yoga because I had the. Um, distinct impression growing up, or grew, grew over time, to believe that, in a way, that my body didn't really belong to me. It sort of was, um, it had to look a certain way, it was supposed to be a certain weight, it was supposed to be decorated a certain way, but it really wasn't my body. You look different it, than you do now? Well, uh, um, I don't know if I look, look that different, different than right. I do now, but I felt tremendously different than I do now. And um, I was actually bulimic for several, for for many years, from in my early teens and um, yeah, late teens and early twenties, and um, as a way of really healing myself from bulimia, I, I really started exercising for the first time. So I was into running and aerobics and all those things, but there was something still missing there. And when I um, kind of the militaristic, do it harder, do it faster, you know, it, it do, it's no good unless it hurts you kind of thing. And, um, and that's part of what I was trying to heal from was like, you know, it's, you're, it's somehow um, you can't enjoy your body the way that it is. So anyway, about seven years ago, I went to a place called Kripalu, which is a yoga retreat center in Lenox, Massachusetts. and. Um, discovered what they call dance kinetics, I call yoga rhythmics. Okay, yeah, you changed the name? I you, have changed you have the changed, name, right. yes. Um, and you've taken this on as, as your occupation and uh, your life's devotion at this well, point. Well, right, no? well, yeah. it's kind of, yeah, one of them, one of one my of two them. life's devotions, writing yeah. and this. So. Writing and this, Yes, okay. and they're very happen, yeah. well, you know, they go together very well because they're both, you know, artistic. And before you got into uh, this is your life's devotion, what, what did you do? Well, just before this, I was a management consultant. So I did. Um, I worked in you know Fortune 500 companies and did management consulting in the organizational uh, development side. So I was still in the, you know, the touchy feely side Sorry, of business, just, definitely. But you know, but you I quit, you worked. Quit, you quit all. I wore of that. a suit and pantyhose, yeah, the whole lovely. thing. Yeah. So you quit all that, and you, now you and just now like this. And now these are my work yeah, these clothes. These are your work clothes. <laughs> all right. Well. Our executive producer, who is desperate for higher rankings, uh, has uh, or ratings, I should say, <laughs> rankings too, whatever, um, has made me promise that we, you will teach me some of what you do tonight. Um, and I, being the, a good sport and uh, anything for the cause, I'm willing to do that. But first, uh, for the viewers, for the sake of, of your, uh, your work, I want to show uh, the viewers here, how it's really done and how it's supposed to look. And we have some footage that I shot at one of your classes a while back, which we will roll up now, and uh, which you will now be seeing on the, <laughs> on <Okay>. the screen. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think um, we're seeing the towards the end of a class. Um, and I want to be clear, want to be clear that uh, the beginning, we move into the body very respectfully and very slowly. So it's um, the idea is to get your body really warmed up and to to have you arrive in your body as opposed to you're still on the beltway or you're making your grocery list or whatever it is, that you're actually in your body paying attention to what's going on. Um, and that, so we move in slowly doing yoga type exercise, breathing, very flowing kind of movements like you're seeing now at the beginning of the class. But there are parts of the class where we move much more vigorously. And um, Are these beginners, people who have, how long have, they, have, have these students been doing this? Well, I have people, you know, who, who call me and say, I had one really wonderful woman one day call and say, um, well, do I have to, you know, do I have to have be really fit? And, and I said, well, what's, you know, what's going on? She said, well, I don't have a fitness level. <laughs> so 
So <laughs> I said, well, do you have a pulse? Everything should be all right. So um, basically, I have people of all different fitness levels coming in because I tell them to move at the rate that their body wants to move. So you know, I say nothing should hurt you. Okay. So anybody can fit into your class. Anybody at any can time. fit in, right? I have, you know, my mom came to my class last night. She's 63, yeah. and um, and then I have, you know, 20 year olds. Actually, I have a 12 year old girl, two 12 year old girls, which I'm very happy to have in my class right now. So the so, so the kinds of movements you're seeing here, as you can see, I'm leading, but what I do is I encourage people to follow me on my impulse of the kind of movement I'm using, but then to take the move and make it their own, and really to enhance it or embellish it and um, make the movement feel really good to them, to connect with the inside of their body as opposed to be directed from the outside to really direct themselves from the inside. So I'm just like, you know, a peripheral guide, but I'm really trying to guide them inside themselves to enjoy their own bodies and see what's going on in there. When you talk about chakras and opening up yourself, what, what is that, how does that express itself here in the dance? Well, there's seven energy centers or chakras in the body, and that comes out of the yogic tradition thousands of years old. And um, what we do is um, move through the seven chakras sequentially using different rhythms and different motions and different kinds of breathing to open up the chakras and get them really um, pumping, you know, really open. And so that by the end of the class, people have this feeling of the energy, the circuit of the energy moving throughout their whole body instead of perhaps doing a kind of like weight lifting or a certain kind of exercise when you're doing repetitive motion over and over just in one part of the body. That part feels good, the rest is left out. This is holistic motion. All right, in, in a minute here, you can take over the show and start teaching me what. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, I mean, this is fantastic to watch, to watch this. Well, it's interesting. I don't, um, it's, it's, it's fun to watch and it's fun to see how be different people interpret the moves. And I say to people, you're going to look, you could look into this class and take a snapshot and we're all together, but we all may be d moving a little differently because we all have a different way of moving, just like we all have a different way of speaking. And so we're trying to find like, what's our way to move and what's our way to move just tonight, you know? as opposed to some idea we have of how it's supposed to look, which is very confining to people. <laughs> <laughs> maybe even to you, even, we'll maybe, see. Maybe even to me, all right. Maybe now, even to me. Now, now, you have your ch now you have your chance, right now? Okay. You're now. okay. All right, so you tell me what to do. Okay, I'm all, well, I'm all um, used for about 30 seconds. Okay, <laughs> 30 seconds, okay, we'll go really Real fast. fast. Um, well, let's actually, um, let's go into the third chakra, okay? Because right. that gets into okay. the more vigorous stuff. You see some of the more um, flowing stuff on the right, tape. Right. So can we can we okay. stand up yeah. here? Yes. Okay, so we're, we're we actually can, we very... Can't stand up well, we can't hard. stand we, up. We have to, we have to go back <laughs> we have down. To actually <laughs> sit we have down, to okay. All right, so. well, so let's see. Um, let's do second chakra okay. stuff. Okay, right. so we're right. going to get down. Right. Second chakra, by the way, is located in the belly, right. the hips, the genitals, okay? So this is the area of the body that has to do with creativity, sensualness, like the, this, this part of the body says, sensual. I feel, okay? Yes, all right. So, so that kind of, that part of the body likes to move in circles and very flowing kind of movements. So what I often have two people do is just to start rotating their hips and all the while they're breathing deeply, long and slow, deep breaths, and they're really focused Tension, inside. Whooshing, That's yeah, right, sorry. just the whooshing right, yeah. thing is happening, yes. <laughs> And seaweed. Uh, somebody said it looks like seaweed. Yes, yeah, seaweed, <laughs> right, right. So I get people to try to kind of think of their spines uh -huh. as seaweed or think of themselves as skin feel, filled with oil, okay? So there's just like uh. this rolling thing back and forth. Plus, we have wonderful music going, okay? Yes. Music is very yes. key to this whole thing, and we and don't we have, have any right now. Because but of some kind of... Uh, federal regulation yes. that prevents us from doing that. But I change the FCC. music every single class and um, I love music. I love all different kinds of music. And so people just like are tuned uh, by the music. Their bodies okay. are tuned by the music. So we might, well. so now see what happens if you move it into your shoulders and your hips and your neck okay. at the same time. Now, I don't see much no, motion no, no, happening no. here. Well, that's because we, we have to cut this okay. very short. Okay. <laughs> because our time is starting to run out, so we have to now talk about uh, where you go, well, to, uh, to participate in a more full-fetched way. Um, 
Where do you have your classes? Okay, well right now they're on um, Maple Avenue near the, the intersection of Carroll and Maple in the old post office where Liz Lerman's Dance Exchange is moving in, 7117 Maple Avenue. Seven, and there's a phone number? Yes, there is there's a phone, phone number. You Funny you should ask. Yes. <laughs> we might. <laughs> Yoga so, uh, yes. 587-1336. That's right. And I can tell you the schedule right now. We're r I'm running Monday night classes and Wednesday night classes. And um, generally it's fine to come in any time and um, the first class is free. So people can try it out since it's really it? different than most things people have done. And what is this, six weeks, ten weeks? Usually six week se sessions, yes. And, and I run them ongoingly. When is, oh, ongoingly? You mm -hmm. can sign up at any point? Yeah. yeah. Oh, so you just do your six weeks in, in, in staggered fashion? Right. Oh, that's right. wonderful. Yeah. Uh, and is there any, <laughs> <laughs> any quick little something that you want to add to all of this? Um, let's see. Well, I guess just um, coming at exercise with the idea that your body is, has a lot to teach you right. is a really different perspective than we usually come at it. Okay, so it may not change your life, but you'll have fun anyway. Yeah, uh, <laughs> definitely. Okay, thanks Robin for joining You're us. Very welcome. <laughs> I'm Howard Cohen, just trying to keep body and soul together. <laughs> <laughs>